I was, I think, speaking. Who was I speaking to? I forgot I was speaking to. But I was speaking to somebody about this actually. Where I was like, it's really annoying how many instances there are reports or stories of people suffering something untowards within the dance music scene, right? Whether it's you know something pertaining to an assault, pertaining to rape, pertaining to whatever else it may be. There's always these weird, horrible stories that you hear coming out that really kind of break your heart. And even when it gets really sad and really, you know, flipping horrible, the ones where it involves like kids taking drugs for the first time in passing away or somewhere, like just r horrible things are spiking, things have been happening all over places. And I remember saying once naively, right, in really naive, you know, open eye, doughy eye kind of way, why don't, why can't we create our version of a utopia in nightclubs? Nightclubs are really a, I've always thought like a safe haven for the freaks and the weirdos, right? If that, or people that live an alternative lifestyle, if that's the case, and it's only us that are in there, why can't we police each other to the point where we don't need outside resources? We don't need the outside people. We can police ourselves a way where we create this temporary um, utopia where you can kind of escape to. Where if you have all the hell stuff going on in your everyday life, your parents or your family or your culture, your religion not accepting who you are and what your beliefs are and what you stand for, you can at least go there to this place that is a kind of created and imagined utopia. Let yourself free because there's no one taking pictures, no one recording shit and trying to catch you out on certain stuff. There's people that represent what you are lifestyle wise, what you represent in terms of how you see yourself, whatever it may be, sexuality, race, color, creed, who cares? You go to this utopia and you just unwind, you unplug from real life and you have some respite, you have some relaxation, you meet other people in the community that are just like you. That's the naive idea I had about nightlife. Then I remembered something my parents told me a while back when I kept going out loads. Nothing good happens after 9 p.m. <laughs> and unfortunately that's the reality of the world you might want the world to be one way but i've always said you always have to operate within the world as is not as the way you want it to be because i think sometimes that's where the kind of you get that real weird uh reality distortion thing happening where your brain just breaks because the idea you had of your world and you go outside the world's different it can kind of shatter everything about you and your perception of reality um and i guess that's the problem that we have at hand is that fundamentally with it being nightlife culture, with it being dance music culture involving clubs and that CD underground, you're going to attract some CD individuals who have some bad intentions and want to take advantage of people who are open-eyed, kind-hearted, and just want to get in the scene and have a good time or whatnot or whatever or whatever else they want to do. And I think this is a good instances and a good reflection and a good representation or example of it. So this is a story that broke at the beginning of the week regarding um asqueef and a, an artist on his label who's accusing him basically of assault and being a creep and it says as follows and i guess the person's account now has been private or something i tried to go i tried to find it but i couldn't so i guess either have they been private or i've been blocked but i think they've been private i'm pretty sure but it says as follows i'm coming on here to share my story of something that happened to me recently as a word of warning to others and explanation for why my move back from london to glasgow Many of those closest to me already know and have known for a while as I kept it to myself, but I don't want to be silenced anymore. I am sick and tired of the music industry, music scene story being such an unsafe place, which is something that is really difficult to kind of wrap my head around, especially when you think of all these amazing, um, very specific niche club nights out at the moment. But it seems like however niche you get, however specific you get in terms of your appeal, the actual instances of untoward behavior or disgusting behavior actually ramp up. Think of places like, or people like establishments or groups like um, Possession. Good example, that party outfit out there in Paris. How many flipping things have come out from that group about people, you know, feeling like they haven't been paid or royalties owed, founders being chucked out? Like really strange things happen off the back of that. So. It's, it's just a weird it's just a weird thing you have to kind of get your head around it continues after being placed on the lineup with a dj and a label owner asqueef last year we quickly became friends and we convinced and he convinced me to move to london for my music career i put a lot of trust in him as he was over a decade my senior and had a lot of experience in the industry so i did looking back there were red flags in the beginning of our friendship such as him sending me money and buying me things but i was excited at the prospect of such a step up in my career that I thought it was just I was just being silly. It continues. Uh, come on, load up. 
There it goes. Shortly, um, shortly after my move to London, he invited me out for drinks where we began to act extremely inappropriately and coerced me into going back to his flat despite me repeatedly saying no. I felt pressured and feared of being stranded alone in a new city and Ubers were failing to show. In general, as much as I want to say you want to be living in a utopia, there has to be, there has to be a general level of hesitation, scepticism and just caution when it comes to you, especially if you're a young lady navigating in dance music scene. I know this guy is meant to be cool and he's got a meme page that everyone loves and whatnot, but just trusting somebody to this level that you don't really know, it's just wild, really, really wild. I understand maybe the music industry is different because there is that kind of collaborative effort that goes into, you know, being a musician and you need everyone, you need people to support, you can't do it on your own. But there's a lot of red flags about this interaction also that don't sit right with me, especially if this was my friend. Hey, I'm going to go meet this guy. Like, why are you going to London to meet this guy? It's about a music career. It's 2022. You don't need to move anywhere to have a music career. You can fucking be successful in your own fucking bedroom if you want to. Um, maybe it continues. Immediately after we got to his, I was sexually assaulted. I was grabbed and I asked forcefully to perform sexual acts whilst he exposed and touched himself. Not once at any concert, not once was any consent made. I did not know how to react except froze up um, from fear. If, unfortunately, this is not an isolated incident and his inappropriate and controlling behaviours continued through messages in person in weeks that followed. For some examples included controlling how I ran my Instagram page, invalidation my feelings and manipulating tactics. For this reason, I and others have left Lobster Ferryman uh, label, which he employed me to work at, as I cannot begin to heal otherwise. I have chosen, I have also chosen to move back to Glasgow, as dealing with the situation alone in London has proven to be too difficult. And I think there was something in the comment about grooming also that I think I've missed out on, right? I think it's not there. Is there a grooming? Uh, yeah, there was an accusation of grooming in there, which set me off because I don't necessarily think this is grooming, personally. Um... I think this is a situation of somebody taking advantage of someone, but I also don't think it's a grooming situation in that regard. It seems a little bit excessive to use that kind of language, but I get it. But overall, terrible, right? Absolutely terrible. And again, it's quite heartbreaking because like I said before, imagine being somebody that's open-eyed, doughy-eyed, naive, like I was in terms of saying, oh, I want the nightlife scene to be a fucking utopia that we create, you know, to kind of give us some, you know, temporary respite from the horrors of everyday life. And then you get into it and you realise it's a reflection of everyday life. There's no getting away from it. Like, monsters exist everywhere, even in your scene, even in your scene that you think is safe and cultivated. Like, there's people spiking people in Bergheim. That's meant to be one of the best clubs in the world with one of the strictest door policies ever. And people get spiked in there, allegedly. You know, it, there's some debate about it, but in general, people have instances where they feel like they're having a drink, they're having fun, and one minute they pick up their same drink, and all of a sudden they're dizzy, they don't remember jack shit. It happens all the time. Cool, that's the case. So clearly, monsters exist absolutely everywhere. They definitely do. But I also have this feeling, and, you know, this is not me kind of, you know, being the flipping champion of victims here, but I have the feeling here, this is my little hunch, that this is not isolated incident. This is something that has been whispered around the scene here and there and said little ways here and there. So people are aware of this. I don't think this is a shock. This doesn't come as a shock to some people. And this is the issue that I have with it in general is that these things are never spoken about. These things are never highlighted. And if anything, it goes the opposite way. The people that actually get covered the most are the ones who maybe some questionable stuff in their flipping um, closet. But no one wants to mention it because usually those people are the ones that are like setting the trends in the dance scene. They have the biggest label, they have the best party, they have the best club, whatever it may be. It's people don't want to say nothing. And the ones that suffer are the victims like this. The silence that everyone has is what ends up having a victim like this see articles of this guy on fucking, you know, electronic beats looking cool, doing this thing, being promoted on the band camp page and whatnot, bloody blah, blah, blah. And like, oh, sick, this guy's cool. Oh, he's sick, he can boost my career. Oh, sick, someone in the label looks like me, blah, 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 blah. But you don't know that behind the scenes, the guy is an absolute monster, allegedly. You have no idea. And I guess that's an issue that I have in general. It's like there's not a lot of bravery out there. The bravery only comes from the victims. 
right? The bravery doesn't really come from the signal industry. They don't really protect people. They don't at all. They just leave you to the wolves. And they give you this idea that all these things matter, like these labels and stuff. They don't at all. The fact that the fact that somehow she was convinced into thinking she needed to move to fucking London in 2020, wherever it was, 2021, 2022, to pursue a music career, especially as a DJ, a producer, it's just insane. You don't need to move anywhere. You can do it all from the comfort of your own home, wherever you are listening to this podcast right now or watching this. You can do it from wherever you are. You don't need anything. You just need a, a, a decent smartphone, a way to take pictures, um, and that's it, and an imagination, and you're off. You're done. You've done most of the work. You don't need anything. You don't need to move anywhere. Um, you can send files. So even if you need to go on a label, you can send them a file. You can you can be an artist under a pseudonym. You can wear a mask and be a flipping, you know, globe traded DJ and stuff and be doing what you need to be doing. So this idea you need a person is just something that obviously this guy uses a manipulation tactic and obviously something also the scene has done inadvertently with their praise that they heap on people in this sort of way, knowing deep down or hearing the whispers that these people also might be a little bit heinous behind the scenes. It really is kind of sick to be fair. And then the response from the guy was you know, it's the kind of response you kind of expect to hear from people that get accused of what they get accused of. So let's kind of read through it. This is from Lobster Firm in the main account, right? My statement. I'm going to start by strongly refuting the allegations of sexual assault that have been made against me this weekend. There has never been in any consensual non-contact between myself and Shona. And initially, I completely refute the allegations of grooming. Which I definitely, when I saw, I think I didn't see it on a podcom. I, I did think the grooming thing was a little bit, because I think the definition of grooming, you know, again, whatever, it's still gross. There's no even you know, fucking arguing over, you know, what shit is the stinkiest. Let's continue. The allegation of grooming are a constructed and distorted narrative of what was reality a very different situation. After meeting, hmm, the fact that he's holding on to it also makes me think this happened. The fact that he's holding on to the grooming, because I'm reading through it again, the fact that he's holding on to this um, misspeak that she did, because again, let's say that was an error. He's holding on to it super hard. It's just a little questionable. And it continues. After meeting at a gig in Scotland last year, I gave a significant amount of time and energy to supporting Shona in the early stages of her DJ and music career, as I have done with many artists over the years. We additionally became good friends and would converse almost daily. I like how he says that. Let's please comp let's please compare your d your your boy DMs with producers of DJs to your girl DMs. Let's please compare them. I bet they're not the same. <laughs> Uh, anyway, she often vocalized. Uh, let's continue. She often vocalized. Yeah, she often vocalized to me and Patton and publicly on Instagram that she had little to no money, and I was sometimes offered to help pay for train tickets and once bought her a T-shirt. This isn't out of ordinary for me to donate or pay for things this way, especially when it's related to friends and those who are involved with or with my music. On the night of the alleged incident, we had been having drinks at a bar and we were both intoxicated and on alcohol, having a good time and being a bit over the top. There had been some mild flirting, rude chat and occasional friendly contact, but nothing excessive and what, and what I would describe or consider near the magnitude described here. Shona decided to stay to my flat and when we arrived, I checked up on my cut and then went to bed with nothing further occurring. So he's completely refuting the fact that he pulled out his little winker and was trying to get her to touch it or something. I think that's what he's basically refuting. In the months following um, this, this we maintained a good relationship. I continued to mentor her, which she accepted in a one a one day per week freelance role at Lobster, featured on Lobster Frame and Rinch Show, did a mix for Lobster Frame and Mix Series, as well as accompanying me to a gig in Scotland and also joining me to a festival performances where we were met friends and other artists. This feels like him saying, I gave you all these things and now you're trying to bury me online because I tried to move to you or something. This feels like a weird thing that like you can say, listing all the stuff that you did for somebody um, in response to them accusing you of sex. Like, he hasn't even tried to, you know, people want to, because I understand he probably thinks that his point of view, that he didn't do nothing wrong. But in these instances, you have to show a mollicum of flipping compassion, right? Of sincerity, of understanding or sensitivity and at least meet the people where they're at. He hasn't met them at all where they're at. He's like, nah, I didn't do it. Go fuck yourself. Crazy. Um, at the festival, we shared a glamping tent. And once again, there was no inappropriate contact. Until a few weeks ago, there had been uh, there had not been a single conversation about anything regarding non-consensual activity. When Shona did first message me about this, it was strictly via text and she refused to talk about the situation. 
my response was to listen and try my best to understand and not to post my not to push my version of events on someone who's not in a good place i now realize that this was a naive decision to become to uh, uh, become personally and professionally involved with someone who i see clearly as being see this guy's double speaking i don't like this this is a bit fishy i now realize that it was a naive decision to be to become personally and professionally linked with somebody who I see was clearly quite vulnerable. So you didn't notice that before, but you still were willing to move to her and stuff. Like, it's just so weird, isn't it? These, these, these niggas in the dance music industry are bizarre people. It continues. Um, I can understand the rush of the... Let's let it load up first. Bobbity, 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 boom. Come on, come on. My computer's a bit slow. Please bear with me. Is it going to load or is it? Is it going to load? Come on, load. I quite right, zoom in then. I can understand the rush of judgment given the severity of these accusations. However, there's a huge difference between being inappropriate or over the top and those accusations of sexual assault directed towards me. The people who know me know that I am not that type of person in the slightest and thank and I thank those of you who have supported me privately offering your support. <laughs> of course, privately. No one's gonna come out and publicly support you. That's the thing that's awful about it. If you actually didn't do it, you want your public support. I don't want private support. Don't privately support me if I didn't do it. Like, leave me the fuck alone. Let me let me go through my dark moment myself. But, you know what I mean? You need public support because you're getting killed in the court of public opinion. Those who are those who clo those, those, to those close to me who work with me and those eyes on Lobster, I'm sorry for the impact that these allegations may be having on you and this your stress that is the beginning of uh, bringing to your lives. I intend to fight these with all my resources necessary to clear my name and I'll be available to cooperate with any additional or pro official process to address the situation. So, the thing that I have an issue with when it comes to these sort of things in general in general for me personally especially when it comes to the accused especially when it's sort of those kind of weird non-apology things from people is that for the most part this is going to affect these guys and people the worst right the artists on the label who have done nothing wrong they're just trying to pursue their career they're trying to do what they're trying to do um and then here is somebody you know who's the head of their label essentially doing some very questionable things right i could be in the queues of questionable things i feel like in this whole instance even if you are legitimately innocent it does really benefit your artist to take a step back and away from these sort of things and say clearly hey I'm pulling back and stepping back from this label. I have nothing to do with it for the foreseeable future until I kind of deal with this issue, you know, I have to do it personally, privately um, with the authorities so that they can continue doing their career because I've seen a lot of people basically get out some of these artists online on Instagram and basically rip them in the comments and say, why have you said nothing? Basically force them to make statements and stuff when some of these people... I'd imagine not all of them, but I think some of them are just maybe at the beginning of their career. Some of them are probably not making that much money at all. And to basically put them in a position where they have to sacrifice their career for a issue that wasn't something that they caused in the slightest is really unfair. And that really shows, in my opinion, bad leadership. Like, Asquith should have definitely said, hey, I'm not involved in this label now. Don't feel, like, uncomfortable not supporting them because of me. I'm going to deal with this stuff privately, but support the guys. It's nothing to do with this. That's how it should have been dealt with. But of course, when it comes to these sort of things, or someone's being this insistent on self-preservation, it gives me icky feelings because it means that maybe there is an element of this story that is really true, which is maybe the most important part of it. Maybe, you know, maybe you can argue and say, oh, you know, she was showing interest too at the beginning, whatever it may be, whatever his argument is. But the crux of what this girl is saying is that she felt like the relationship between the both of them was inappropriate. And I think like it goes back to the whole thing of, the dance music scene and just people working with other girls in general i think there just needs to be maybe a hard and fast rule especially in dance music especially when it comes to drinking and alcohol and and drugs and nightlife stuff and people letting their inhibitions down and whatnot there needs to be a hard and fast rule that if you've got a label if you have if you have a club night if you run a club um whatever it may be you just have to make dating people that you work with just no no that is grounds for a firing. That is gross misconduct. That goes against our rules, whatever it may be. That just has to be something that you write in the contract. Because I feel like these sort of instances always seem to happen because people get comfortable. They feel they misread signals. They share space with people. They assume proximity means affection. Like all these weird blurred lines happen and you add drugs into the mix, alcohol into it. People get crazy. And these things happen all the time. And unfortunately, the industry isn't there to help you because they promote people who they know 
categorically have done some sketch stuff in the past, but because they generate clicks, because they're popular, or because the label pays them, they put them up on a pedestal, which then leads people, again, in small villages in Scotland to look at the internet, think this person's a, a big wig and is going to do something for their career, and then move flipping however 100 miles away is to kind of pursue a career in something like dance music when you just do it from the comfort of your own home so it's a weird cyclical thing everyone is kind of to blame in a weird way but the, the apology from this guy is obviously terrible there are some red flags there in terms of what he's basically saying and not saying and emphasizing and whatnot but you know i just would have wished he would have stepped back away from the label a little bit to protect the artists on the label and it would have been nice if he would have been a little bit more sensitive to what this girl actually had to say about the issue and how she interpreted the interaction but you know these guys are not in the business of uh understanding and stuff it's all a little bit you know especially at the, at the higher echelons of dance music it's all a bit take 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 you know what I mean? there's a lot of entitlement around there there's a lot of ownership and mm -hmm. so it's no surprise that these guys are really handsy and like i gave you this i gave you a mix series i gave you that i took you to a festival i gave you your gigs and it suddenly feels like it gives them a justification to do what they want with your body and whatnot it's just a bizarre 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 world it really really is but the more you get closer to it, the more it hurts especially like it's the same with fashion like as much as i'm a fan of it and i'd love to have my own brand as much as i'd love to dj and like, would love to do that professionally the closer you get to it the actual business side of it the horrible it, the more horrible it becomes and honestly honestly does but um you know what can you do so hopefully you know fingers crossed that girl's getting all the support that she needs and fingers crossed that this ends up being a topic that we don't have to talk about you know a lot more time because uh, i don't know man for me it's a bit it's a bit nasty i gotta be honest it's a little 